Hi there. The 1970 Volkswagen has something new. This, a bigger, longer-lasting engine. How long will it last? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> According to this, it's a 1970 model. Is that correct? <laughs>
a very informative start to the show, I thought, today. An opportunity to see some of the things that has to happen to turn a regular beetle into a stealth beetle. I'm here at KE Panel Beaters to see the last of the colour going onto the 002 body. Now, that's the one you saw earlier. And the reason that I'm here is because Jean and Pierre are in the workshop working flat out on the vehicle. I caught up with Jean a little while ago and he just gave me some information about the rear suspension. Let's take a look. We're going to look at the rear suspension of the V8 Stealth Beetle, try and explain a few more of the technical aspects of how the mechanics all work together. On the rear suspension we have a hub which sits over here inside a bearing. When the wheel turns this is what happens. So from the hub we have a brake disc and the brake disc gets stopped by a brake caliper. So the hub needs to be driven. It's not going to turn all on its own. It needs to be driven and it gets driven by the gearbox and between the gearbox and the hub we have a drive shaft and on the drive shaft we have two CV joints. The reason for the CV joints is because this suspension needs to move up and down. We can't have a solid joint. We need, we need something that can rotate. So we're going to have a CV joint in there. The CV joint drives the stub axle and the stub axle as you can see is blind so it sits inside the hub so it, can, it has to turn with that. CV joint sits here and all this turns and rotates. So what we're working on today is getting all these measurements correct because some of these components need to be manufactured. Once we've got the rear wheel being driven by the gearbox and the drive shaft, this also needs to be able to move in up and down or you can view it as the vehicle moves up and down and the wheel actually just follows the road surface. All this is governed by a shock absorber and it's exactly that, it absorbs the shock. So this guy can move up and down with the movement of the suspension. Apart from absorbing the shock, we also need to be able to hold the weight of the car. And that weight is being carried by a suspension coil, which is this guy here. And this coil, you can also adjust as in softer coils, medium coils, harder coils, depending on the weight of the car. As you can see, we've got some wood being used for designing purposes. This is an engine cross member, which is a member that can be removed when the engine and gearbox get fitted. It also holds the shock absorber, so all these loads, all these movements will push against this guy. And these two points also give strength to the, to the engine and gearbox cradle. Needless to say, this will be made out of Domex or some other mild steel. It will not be wood in the future. So, we've had all of the aluminium panels cut at Vulcan Steel for the chassis, but there's still a little bit of work that needs to be done before we can assemble. And keep your eye out for Pierre, working on the moulds for the rear fenders. The chassis is designed around an interlocking system, uh, a bit like Lego for grown-ups. This means that the chassis gets a lot of its strength from the panels locking together and not just from the welding. When the panels arrive from Vulcan Steel, the burr from the laser cutting process needs to be removed and each panel is test fitted. The tolerance is 0.2 of a millimetre and occasionally a little fettling and coaxing is required to get the perfect fit. We also run a soft sanding disc over the panels. This is to remove the protective layer from the aluminium and this is vital to ensure a clean and strong weld. Here is just finishing off the fiberglass moulds for the rear fenders. The rear wheels will be either 10.5 or 12.5 inches wide. 10.5 inch wheels, amazingly, will fit under a standard fender. 
but if you want 12 and a half inch wide wheels, you're going to need these big boys. Right, so let the fun begin. I know Jean's been waiting for this moment for a long time. Let's build that chassis. Before welding starts, all the surfaces are cleaned. Over a hundred spot welds are used to secure the panels, before longer welds of between 10 and 30 centimeters finally fix the chassis into place. Welding this high-grade aluminium chassis is a highly technical job, real skill and precision is required. Too much heat in one place could easily warp or distort the chassis out of shape. So we stagger the welding around the chassis to help release built up heat. To further reduce this risk, the chassis is firmly bolted to the jig table and various panels are attached by clamps and brackets. The TIG arc welding process is utilised using crystal argon gas and aluminium 5356 category rods. One highly skilled welder and eight hours later and the chassis is ready for powder coating. So that just about wraps up another busy episode. I hope you've enjoyed the update. I can tell you that hot off the press, the first chassis is back from the powder coaters and Jean, as we speak, I can guarantee is bolting all manner of goodies to it. The body is looking amazing and we look forward to bringing you another cool episode very shortly. If you're keen to keep updated with the V8 Stealth Beetle story, then please subscribe to our YouTube channel and by clicking the bell icon, you'll make sure that you'll be the first ones to watch any new episodes as they happen. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.